everyone, today I thought we'd take a really good look at this stuff, the whitest, brightest, brightest white in the world, or as I like to call it, white 2.0. It's amazing stuff. I thought I'd show you what to expect and how to get the best results out of it. Now, uh, this came about because there's been a lot of talk over the last couple of years about super white paints and the ones that you've probably heard about are ones that reflect a lot of light and they're putting them on the roofs of buildings and stuff to, well, to help with global warming and the environment because they, they don't need cooling systems because the, the paint can do it. And in fact, last week I read a really interesting thing that said um, this scientist reckoned if we painted loads of stuff all over the earth with a super bright white paint, it would stop global warming altogether. I don't know if I've got enough of that to do this today, but let's see if we can have a look at what it might do in our art. So it comes out really nice. And just to tell you a little bit about this super paint, it's very exciting. Um, what it does is this is the opposite of the blackest black because it reflects almost all the light that hits its surface. In fact, it reflects over 99% of visible light and that makes it really, really stupidly bright. Now that probably won't be coming across on the screen. You're gonna have to take my word for it. It is way brighter. We did some studies on this. We actually um, commissioned some studies on this and we found that it is 50% brighter than the best-selling acrylic paint. So you're gonna put it on your brush. You're gonna use a nice soft brush as always. Now this stuff is crazy because one of the brilliant things about it is how opaque it is. You can't see through it, it's not translucent. A lot of white paints that you may have used, you need like 10 coats to cover something up. That's not the case with this. I've drawn a line with a bit of pencil. Look at that straight over. It's almost like a whiteout. That's what you want from your paint. You want it to actually cover the surface. You don't want to build up 200 layers. Let's have a little look on this mini canvas I've got. This might be interesting. Now you might think, oh, that's really white. That's a really white canvas. It's been done from the art shop. It's um, this stuff it's coated with is called gesso. But look what happens. I don't know if it's coming out, but this white that I'm putting over it is way, 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 way brighter. And when this dries, it dries super duper 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 matte, which means it also looks very, 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 very flat. Now, when you, you, it goes on just about everything because it's an acrylic, it's got a lovely flow to it. It smells nice as well. It's not, nothing horrible or toxic about this paint. And it goes on just about everything. And really, I know you're just watching me paint white paint on stuff. But honestly, it is blindingly white, this stuff. Now, when you paint it on something like this, this is a wooden thing. The wooden thing is porous, of course. So it's gonna soak in. So it will take a couple of coats on something wooden, or you could seal the wooden thing with some, I normally use a mixture of PVA glue and water, actually. Cheap and cheerful, normal craft store white glue for those of you in the US. I don't think you call it PVA glue. I think you might call it something else, but you know what I mean. That white school glue stuff. Mix a bit of water in that. Paint that on your porous surfaces, like your wood or whatever, and that's gonna give a really, really good finish. Now, I haven't got any PVA today, because I'm being a bit lazy. I could just run into the other room and get some, but I'm not. I'm just gonna do an initial coat of white 2.0 on there. We've got this little, little bunny rabbit here. Should we, should we paint a bunny rabbit super white, super bright? I'll tell you a little bit more about the paint as well. What you're looking at here is not just any old acrylic paint. What, you, what we're using is our special binder that we created, um, which can hold more pigment than any other acrylic uh, resin out there. So it's got a lot in it, a lot more pigment, and that's why you're getting that level of opacity, that coverage. Just with the tiniest bit on your brush, a little bit is gonna go a really long way, just purely because of the quality of the ingredients, actually, and how much pigment this has got in it. But it's not only um, about the good quality pigment. What it really is about with this paint is also these optical brighteners we put in it. Now they exist, a lot of washing powders have optical brighteners in them if you want to get really geeky. And what they do is they reflect the UV element of the light to make it almost like this is emitting light in a way, it's bouncing it back. Cosmetics use a lot of this stuff. The other thing that's interesting about this paint, which is also why it goes super bright, 
and super wide is just the surface that's created. So the way that these um, particles in the paint lay down on the surface makes it slightly bumpy. You'd never know by the eye, but if you looked at it under a microscope, it's slightly bumpy. And what that's doing is it's bouncing the light off at lots of angles. It's diffusing the light, it's scattering the light, and that's what makes it look so flat and so white. So I'll build up a few coats. It's always better when you're using white too to build up several very thin layers and let it dry between the coats. So many of you do a layer like that and you go straight over it again. That's not what we're on about. That's not building up lots of layers. You've got to let it dry before you put another coat on. Otherwise it just goes really thick. So let's have a look at how our spoon, see our spoon is still a little bit wet. I need to let that dry before I can give it another coat. Uh, our canvas, oh that's dry, should I give that another layer? I really don't know if it looks, I mean you might just be on your screen looking at what looks like normal white paint, but I can assure you this is considerably whiter than any other paint you're going to be able to readily buy. There are scientific coatings out there though, um, sort of spectral tiles and things like that, um, that also reflect a lot of white, but they're very, very expensive. I think there's a, there's a thing called a Spectralon, I think it's called a Spectralon, and they use it in scientific instruments to measure light. Uh, and this is very similar, so you can make a tile out of that for a scientific thing. I feel like I want the whitest, brightest, brightest, whitest pencil. Now this is interesting, you're going to see this is, let me, let me show you this. So the first coat, when you put on anything shiny, this pencil's shiny, it's glossy, is it's gonna look a bit stringy. Can you see that? It's a bit, bit sort of hairy. Even though I'm using a really high quality brush here, it's still not perfect. But that first coat, the thing to know about this is that first coat is just gonna key that surface for me and it's gonna give subsequent coats something to hang on to. So it may look a bit rubbish and like nothing's really worked, but I promise you, once that layer dries, that very thin layer, we're gonna be able to um, go over that with some, some white and it will go on really strong. Just for the fun of it, let's see what it does on glass. Now I'm totally expecting the first coat, a lot like the pencil, to be a little bit stringy there. Can you see, it doesn't go on great because this is a shiny surface, but what I do know is once this first layer's dry, the second one will probably look quite amazing and we might even end up with the brightest, whitest bottle in the whole world. So let's let that scruffy first coat dry and we'll give it another layer in a minute. So I think the best thing to do now is um, perhaps let all these things dry and then come back to them in a little bit and give them another coat and build up some layers. And then hopefully we're gonna have a whole series of super bright, ultra white things. And then maybe it'd be really fun. It's a really sunny day outside. It'd be fun to take these out into the sunshine, wouldn't it? And see just how bright they look outdoors. Because I've got a feeling when that UV that's in the sun hits these, they're gonna pop off. Whoa, so now they're dry. That's only the first coat, but my gosh, I don't know if you can see, but they've gone very matte. They're no longer shiny, they're very flat. All the light is being diffused evenly, and it's beautiful. It's almost like what snow does, I think. Let's start with our little pencil. Now, as you remember, the first coat was just to key it, to give the second coat something to grip to, and that's absolutely worked. Can you see how much better the second one goes on? And again, I'm using the tiniest amount of paint on my brush. I mean, I can't tell you lot this enough. The tiniest little bit, a little goes a long way, almost just gently, gently spreading it nice and evenly. And that's our second coat on a very shiny surface. So that's really good. By the second coat, there's plenty of grip. And I would say three coats on something really shiny ought to do it. Speaking of really shiny things, let's have a look at how our milk, our milk glass thing is doing. So that now is nice and flat, very matte, and that is keyed. So that means this layer is gonna have got something to stick to. And sure enough, can you see the difference? 
Can you see how well that is going on on that second coat? And it's good because some paints, that second layer would actually lift up the first layer. I don't know if you've ever experienced that with any of your paint before. It's so frustrating. We wanted to make sure it absolutely didn't do that. So you put the second layer on and it is not picking up the first layer. It's leaving the first layer stuck to the glass. It's really clung to it well and that's also testament to this really special acrylic um, that we use. It's a very special polymer that not only enables us to put more pigment in it than any other paint, but also enables us to make it stick to stuff like glass, which is really useful. We need it to do that. So that's our second coat on there. Now, as you can see, it's still really shiny, but that will mat down as it dries. And that become really, really flat. Let's take a look at our porous thing. Now remember, the first coat on this really soaked in. We used it to seal it. Um, but the second one should go, there you go. It's not soaking in. It's going nice and flat. That's now been sealed. So that acrylic's done exactly what we hoped and it's sealed it. And that second coat, I don't know if that's coming, that's really why. I mean, I'm getting a bit of a headache looking at it now. It's, whoa, it's so bright. It is really bright. Whatever you do, the most important thing actually is be patient with it. Lots of tiny thin layers is the best way to get the finish that you want. Always, always use a tiny little bit, make it go as far as you can and build it up. But look at that, that's so, so ridiculously white. I'm most excited about our little bunny rabbit because I think he's gonna be brilliant, isn't he? Little snow bunny there and look how flat and matte he is. I think what I'm gonna do for fun is give everything three coats and then I'm gonna take it outside because it's a beautiful sunshiny day in the garden and I'm gonna see what these look like in the proper sunlight. I'm really, really excited. Right, I'm gonna show you the number one secret tool I've got in my studio and how it makes my life much easier and much faster. It's this bad boy, the hairdryer, because acrylic paint is gonna dry in seconds with this. So if you can't be bothered to wait, give it a blast with this. Oh, are you ready? Final coat on the pencil, the brightest, whitest pencil in the world. Da 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 da, woo, look upon it. How glorious is that? It is. Do you know what? I've got to say it. I have never seen a whiter pencil in my life. Look at that. That is so bright. That's unbelievable. It's uncanny. Look at that. And that's white paper. That's a good comparison. Let's do the spoon. Remember, very porous surface. Took a couple of coats to get it going. I'm recapping for you here. Third and final coat. This is interesting, so this was glass. Two coats on it at the moment, still a bit patchy, can you see that? But it's going on there, it's doable. Now this, th oh yes, here we go, look at that. That's not too bad. I reckon it probably needs a fourth coat on glass to really nail it, but I think you'd get away with that. It's very bright. Obviously right now they're still wet, so they're a bit shiny. But you wait till these mat down and they are gonna look utterly gorgeous. Let's do our rabbit. Okay, so they've had three coats, they're completely dry, they're really powdery, they're really matte, they're really white, they're really, really bright. Let's take them outside and see what they look like in the sunlight. Let's follow the white rabbit. So let's see, the sun's there. Oh, can you see it? Look at that. It's, it's ridiculous, look how bright it is. It's literally, oh my God, do you know what? I'm not joking, I can't look at it. Oh. It's actually giving me a headache. I'm blinded by the white. <laughs> I'm gonna have to have a lie down. So thank you all so much. That looks amazing. I'm gonna need a lie down. I think I'm gonna get a headache. It's so ridiculously bright. Have fun with white 2.0. If you've got any questions, just write them in the comments or get in touch with me. I love helping with your work. I love seeing what you make. So make stuff with it and enjoy it. Love you all, bye.